first time. Um, our show starts at 8, and today we were lucky. Nothing got in the way for us to start at, on time. So we're here, and I'm going to be waiting for some of you to join the chat room. So if you're here, let me know by saying hello in the chat room. 네, 오늘 2024년 그랜 TV 토이 스피키 라이브 클래스 첫 수업인데요. 첫 라이브 방송 함께 해주고 계시다면 한번 채팅룸에 있다, 나 왔다라고 한번 채팅을 올려봐 주시기 바랍니다. And by the way, I'll be speaking in English throughout the show, but I'll be using easy and very, very, like, you know, entry and elementary level English. So everybody who is actually getting ready for TOEIC speaking or any kind of speaking test or any kind of English test would have no problem understanding. So don't be scared, okay? All right, so I have Po Yu. Hello, thank you for coming. And I see, the name is I see. Hello, thank you for coming. David Kuo, okay, so this is your first time joining this live show. Jino Nim, 안녕하세요, 반갑습니다. I'm glad to see you too. And oh, I'm sorry, but I can't read Chinese, but is that um, Shin? The last word is Shin, right? I know the word shin, but I don't know the other two words. So anyway, hello. Well, thank you for joining the live show. So most of you who have um, Chinese like, like name or last names, I guess you guys are coming from Taiwan, right? As far as I know, yes. So it's Young Shin, okay, Young Shin, yes. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. All right, so normally we have people from Taiwan, we have people from Vietnam and Thailand, a lot of people from Japan. Also, we've been getting some people from European countries and also some South American countries. So we have like all international, like, you know, people, students are studying for English test, toy speaking. All right, so JHL, you're here. Okay, thank you for coming. Wow, um, you know, for Korea, in Korea, normally December, January, and February, these three months are considered winter. It was super cold in December, but somehow in January, it didn't get so cold, but it had been snowing. It's been snowing about like, you no, know, it snowed three, four, even like, five times I think once or twice it was just like you know snow and then gone but then like three four times a snow actually piled up so we saw lots of snow throughout this winter and I think we're expecting more snow here so I guess like uh, people from Taiwan Thailand or Vietnam you can't imagine seeing snow all the time but yeah right now in Korea if you happen to visit Korea this time of the year you might you know have a chance to run into snow Okay, so Po Yu, you got speaking 150 and writing 160. That is really good, okay? But you want to get 160 for speaking. Okay, so the difference between 150 and 160 if we're on TOEIC speaking test is that you have to be more careful using English grammar, okay? You know, I know it's really... You, you really have to think a lot to, like, you know, to, to consider or choose which preposition to use but you have to be really precise whether to choose at or in or on and if you want to get into that level 7 box you know 160 then you have to be more considerate about using when to say a and when to say the and uh, which are the countable nouns and uncountable nouns okay so that is a tip to you know, improve your score by 10 you know, points. So make sure to keep that in mind when you're taking your next test, okay, for you? JL, uh, December? Uh, yeah, December this year, last December, that is uh, 2023, December was much colder yeah, than the usual times. So the, 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 the temperature outside went down to minus 17 degrees, yes. Minus seven is nothing, yeah. Minus 17 degrees Celsius. I'm not joking. So it was super duper cold. Okay, so Teiji, yes, I saw you went to Billy Joel's concert in Tokyo. Yeah, I was following you on Instagram. I'm not really active these days on Instagram, but I am seeing people's posts and I saw you there. Yeah, I saw the pictures. You had a really good time. And you had that VIP tag. 
So you're like a VIP um, guest, I guess. <laughs> I hope you were able to see Bill Joel like, like closer than the others. Uh, Tang Yongjin Nim, hi Gwen, I have a question. I saw your videos that we need to use led by on workshops and given by for lectures. What about orientations or classes? Does it give as well? Actually, um, get, uh, orientation and classes are more like people participating. So if like a session, uh, if an event is considered uh, um, for like participants to actively participate, you know, like workshops, orientations or classes, people who are participating in these events, they have to actively participate. So like whoever is teaching or leading this group is like teaching something or delivering something. But the participants, they have to do something together. It goes back and forth, back and forth. That's why for workshops, classes, and orientations, it's used as lead or led by, okay? The verb lead and led by is used. But for lectures or presentations or speeches, you know, normally the person who's speaking, the speaker gives information and talks in one direction. There are no participants. So lectures, the teacher or the professor just talks in one direction. And for presentations and for speeches, it's the same, okay? So that's why for those cases, we use the verb give or given by. I hope you understood, Youngjin, okay? If you don't understand, ask me again, okay? I'll clarify that, uh, you know, concept. Tadashi, thank you for joining the show. And Kuku Kaka, this is your first time joining the live show. Welcome, 모신 것을 환영합니다. Okay, April, hello, Ms. Glenn, have speaking test tomorrow. So nervous, but your videos are really helpful. Thank you for the compliment. Okay, so Youngjin, it seems like you understood why, when to use give, and when to use lead, okay? All right, and um, uh, this is a common question that I received from Tadashi and uh, Teiji, okay? So it seems like some of the international viewers are very curious how I am so like, you know, close with Tadashi and Teiji and how they got to know me better as like, you know, um, like student and teacher relationship and how they were able to learn more of TOEIC speaking from me um, or like, like personal ways. Uh, the thing is they, you know, they actually didn't learn TOEIC speaking from me. They learned TOEIC speaking from me through this channel, but they were willing to visit me in Korea and you know <laughs> become like you know actual friends so when they came to Korea I think Tadashi came here two years ago first time and then he came here again at the end of last year that was his second time and uh, uh, Teiji actually came here last time last year for the first time and I guess they got um, curious uh, like became curious of how what they could learn more from me if they meet me in person so they visited and I gave them my Korean version of Toik speaking you know book that um, I wish I could release in English I think I could because I'm, I'm getting help of a lot of people so anyway that's how I gave them the book and I gave them some tips and um, as soon as that English version gets ready, I'm going to release it online so a lot of interviewer, international viewers can buy the book, okay? I think I'm going to have it like, you know, published in the ebook version so you guys can just download it and then we're going to try to like provide you with online lectures that could help you, assist you with, you know, using the books. So, you know, that's how we got to know each other and that's how they became my, like, Japanese, like, students. I wouldn't call them students, like, you know, friend. And I've been giving them some tips, you know, like through a cow chat messengers, okay? So, yeah, that's how we got to know each other. And because, like, you know, they're Japanese and it seems like, you know, they're, they've been, somehow through this like you know live show it seems like they're closer with me right so a lot of people have been sending them dms on instagram asking them how you know they were able to like get like toy speaking lectures from gwen and that's how everything happened okay and i just wanted to explain yeah that to everybody through this live show okay so gretchel gretchel and skelsoat Hi, Ms. Gwen. I'm from Philippines. First time to join your live class. You're so pretty. Thank you for the compliment. Cuckoo, mm. kaka. 
wow, yeah, they came actually from Japan, and it's my turn, my turn to actually visit Japan, okay, and uh, Teiji, it's the seat, not the guest, okay, so you are in the VIP zone, hmm, cool, okay, all right, well, anyway, um, the downside of Korean winter, guys, never visit Korea in winter, I mean, I would love to have more people visiting Korea, more and more people to come, you know, see our like country. We have so many advanced things here, but I don't really recommend you guys to come to Korea in you know winter time. Just like past winter, after February, not even March, like towards the end of March, I think would be better time to visit Korea. Because like when you come to Korea during winter, you have to wear more clothes. I see some foreigners walking in Gangnam streets and they weren't prepared for this weather. So they don't even have these like puffer jackets, like really heavy jackets. So I see them like really freezing cold outside, but still they need to do their like, you know, thingy, right? R walking around and doing those tourist things. So I feel really sorry for them. So downside of Korea, vis visiting Korea in winter is it's too cold it's snowy and it's too dry yes it's really really dry so even for me as like native korean of course i lived abroad in shanghai in like america and you know whenever i lived abroad i've never faced this like you know kind of dryness issues so in korea how how far it gets dry is like you know your skin your skin itches all the time at night when i take a shower i you know try to use some body cleansers to like that, that can soften or hydrate more skin you know better however i'm still dry so i have chappy lips i have dry skin it itches all the time i had some foreign friends who came to korea in the winter time and they had some you know issues with you know itchy skin so don't visit korea in winter time Okay, so Ki An Ah uh, Huang, well, thank you for visiting. Long time no see, yes. Okay, so now we're gonna go, go on, move on to part one. Okay, we changed the format. All right, so we try to arrange it so that you could see the questions better. I'm here at the corner, and here is the first passage, okay? All right, so let me read it for you first. Okay, for a, your better understanding, I'll read it for you. Hello, and thank you for calling Harmony Yoga Studio. Your journey to wellness begins here. Our experienced instructors are dedicated to guiding you through a holy yoga experience. Check our class schedule, upcoming events, or visit our website for more information. Okay. Um, I've, I've met some new students recently, and of course they're Koreans. And when I encounter my Korean students for the first time, whether they have experience of learning English prior to meeting me, and whether this being her, their first time, like, you know, trying to improve their English speaking, most of Koreans have that, like, Korean way of English speaking. It's very choppy. So, <laughs> My new students read, would read a passage, something like this. Hello, and thank you for calling Harmony Yoga Studio. Your journey to wellness begins here. Our experienced instructors are dedicated to guiding you through a holy yoga experience. Check our class schedule, upcoming events, or visit our website for more information and they just read each word separately. So I tell them to link the words and link the sounds, but they just don't understand what linking is. So um, if you guys want to try that linking you know, approach, you gotta stop like breathing in the middle of a sentence, okay? So the first sentence here is quite short. It's from hello to the word studio, okay? So it's about like 10 words, right? So when you're reading those 10 words, do not stop, do not breathe in the middle, and just, you know, talk, but as slow as, it, as you can. Don't, not fast as you can, but slow as you can. Okay, so it would be something like this. Hello, and thank you for calling Harmony Yoga Studio. Okay. Okay, so I didn't stop. I didn't say hello and thank you. 
but I said, hello, and thank you for calling Harmony Yoga Studio. And sort of like, yeah, don't do it like staccato. Staccato, no, don't do it like that. Don't make it choppy, okay? And from the word your to the next, uh, the word, the, the ending word would be here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's only six words. <sighs> Breathe in. Your journey to wellness begins here. Okay? And then you breathe again, and then you start with the word hour, and then you go all the way down to experience. That's quite long, but still, you could do it. Our experienced instructors are dedicated to guiding you through a holy yoga experience. Okay. And then you breathe again. Check our class schedule, upcoming events, or visit our website for more information. Okay. So you have to approach that linking, you know, um, skill, a linking tactic. You got to be able to do that linking if you want to sound more like, you know, actual English. Okay. So I think this problem comes, especially for like Koreans. We have like that choppy way of speaking our language and also for Japanese people. Yes, because you guys also have that choppy way of talking. So like, you know, you have to understand what linking is. Yeah. Okay. And some of the words here, the word is harmony, harmony, yoga. I mean, we use harmony, the same word, same meaning in Korean. We say harmony, harmony. But the difference is when you're reading it in English, the stress, it comes on heart, right? So it's harmony, harmony. Again, it's not yoga, yoga. No, it's yoga, yoga. And you have to put the stress on that O, oh, the syllable. Oh, yo, yo syllable. Okay. And the word journey, journey, and begins has the second vowel syllable. So the vowel goes on I instead of E. So it's begins. And then the word experienced, it's the second E that has the stress. Experienced, experienced. And the word instructor, instructor has the stress on the second syllable, the second vowel, which is U, instructors, instructors. The word dedicated has the first vowel uh, stress, dedicated, dedicated. And um, holy yoga experience, it goes the same, the second E, experience. And events, yeah, a lot of Koreans get that word wrong. It's not events, it's events. Events, the second E has the stress. And lastly, the word information, A, has the stress. So it's got to be information, information, okay? All right, so let me read this passage again twice, but I'm going to read it once, slowly, and second time, faster, okay? Hello, and thank you for calling Harmony Yoga Studio. Your journey to wellness begins here. Our experienced instructors are dedicated to guiding you through a holy yoga experience. Check our class schedule, upcoming events, or visit our website for more information. Okay, now this time a little bit faster. Hello, and thank you for calling Harmony Yoga Studio. Your journey to wellness begins here. Our experienced instructors are dedicated to guiding you through a holy yoga experience. Check our class schedule, upcoming events, or visit our website for more information. Okay. So that was the first passage. Now moving on to the second passage. All right, now I'm going to read this so that you could just you know easily understand what it's about. Welcome aboard. We're thrilled to have you join us for this incredible adventure to the Grand Canyon, okay? I'm Rick Kirby, your tour guide for today. If you have any questions or need assistance, Feel free to ask me anytime. Buckle up, relax, and get ready for breathtaking views and unforgettable memories. Okay. All right. So it's a tour. It's a guided tour. And obviously, it's in Grand Canyon, right? This group is going to Grand Canyon and they're going on some kind of a tour. I don't know what kind of tour it is. I just, you know, made it up as a tour. And the tour guide's name is Rick. Kirby, okay? It's not Kirby, it's Kirby. You have to read it as Kerr. Like when you say somebody, a guy, when you call a guy and try to respect him, we say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, right? The spelling is S-I-R. We don't say sir, it's sir. Yes, sir. So it's the same. Kerr, Kirby, Rick Kirby. 
Okay, and the words um, uh, you know, thrill, thrilled, thrilled, the TH sound, right? And incredible has the second vowel stress. It goes on E, incredible, incredible. It's Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon, okay? And questions, the stress goes on the vowel, second vowel, which is E, so questions, questions, or assistance, the stress goes on I, assistance, and buckle up, meaning you have to fasten your seatbelt, right? Buckle up, relax, and get ready for a breathtaking, breathtaking. You don't say breathe taking, it's breathtaking views and unforgettable. We see this word a lot, unforgettable. The stress goes on the E vowel, unforgettable, and then memories, memories. The stress is on the first vowel, which is E, memories, memories, okay. So I'm going to read this passage twice, and if you guys have any questions regarding how to make the proper sound for any of the words that you just saw in the passages, let me know, okay? All right, so the slower version is, welcome aboard, we're thrilled to have you join us for this incredible adventure to the Grand Canyon. I'm Rick Kirby, your tour guide for today. If you have any questions or need assistance, feel free to ask me anytime. Buckle up, relax, and get ready for breathtaking views and unforgettable memories. Okay, so that was a slower version, and now faster one. Welcome aboard. We're thrilled to have you join us for this incredible adventure to the Grand Canyon. I'm Britt Kirby, your tour guide for today. If you have any questions or need assistance, feel free to ask me anytime. Buckle up, relax, and get ready for breathtaking views and unforgettable memories. Hello, thank you for joining, Ami. Welcome back. Okay. Oh, by the way, guys, oh, if you feel that, you know, our content, our videos are very helpful, like you guys always say, for you, you studying English or toy speaking, then please press the like button. Okay. Please press the like button and follow our YouTube channel so you get all the new, like, you know, notifications for like, any kind of news happening here. Okay. All right. So that was the second passage. All right, so David, hi Gwen from Taiwan, and it's my first time on live class, and it's great to be here watching Gwen's channel for a while, ready for my first toy against speaking or writing test. So nervous, okay. Well, you shouldn't be nervous. You shouldn't be nervous, especially for the speaking test, because if you are nervous, you can't show like your full ability, right? So in Korea, we have like, you know, the we have a drink or some kind of a pill that you can take to uh, like lessen your nervousness and, and anxiety. We have that kind of pill to make you feel calm, calm down a bit before anything like really nervous, like a test or something or an interview. So why don't you like, you know, I, I always tell my friends, students that it's okay to get a help of those kind of like medicine or like drinks. So please consider. JHL, I have a question. Do I need to speak the speed like your second version? No, no, no. You definitely don't have to speak f as fast as what I am doing, okay? I mean, my English, to be honest, uh, I was like graded by ACTFL. It's like another international like group, uh, education group where they, you know, level people's like English or other like, you know, language ability. And my English level is higher than the f like full score, which is 200 of toy speaking. Okay. They gave like, they label me my English as superior. So I'm like just native, native English. So I'm really fast. I'm really fluent. So if you can do it like this, it's good, but you don't have to necessarily speak as fast as what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. 30 seconds is so long. What do you mean 30 seconds is so long? You are given actually 45 seconds. Oh, and I've been getting a lot of questions about whether you guys should fulfill that time given. But typically for part one, you do not have to fulfill that time, okay? So normally you're given 45 seconds to read the passage, right? But, you know, it's gonna take you only about 25, maybe 35 seconds to finish the whole passage, reading the whole passage, okay? So if you're done, just stay there, be quiet. And if you feel like you can read it, if you wanna start over again, just start over again. And even if you get cut off during your second lap, 
it's fine because you finished your first lap and you finished reading it for the first time, right? So it's okay to get cut off. Okay, so T, you're here again. Thank you for coming. And I see interest to know the, the relax pill. I wonder if we have the kind of, I'm pretty sure you guys would have those like, you know, medicine to relieve your anxiety. I'm pretty much sure that you guys have something similar. So try to look for one. I think that one is actually coming from Japan, I think, yeah. And in Taiwan, I know that you guys have everything Japan, so you surely should have something similar. Okay, so let me show you how Oh, how my reading, how long my reading would last if I time my reading. So this is 45 seconds timer. Here we go. Welcome aboard. We're thrilled to have you join us for this incredible adventure to the Grand Canyon. I'm Rick Kirby, your tour guide for today. If you have any questions or need assistance, feel free to ask me anytime. Buckle up. Relax and get ready for breathtaking views and unforgettable memories. So that was like, what, 25 seconds, right? And it didn't sound fast, didn't it, right? It, did it sound fast? No, it didn't sound fast. So that's a moderate speed reading that I would recommend. Youngjin, if we make a mistake in our first try and it made our second try, well, they... If you could correct yourself, your second try, if you try a second time and you can correct yourself, I surely recommend you to do so, yes. I mean, if you made a mistake while reading for the first time, you should stop yourself and try to go back to the beginning of that sentence and start reading all over again, like as if nothing has happened, okay? All right, so we're gonna move on now to part two. Okay, it's a dock, right? I remember my family uh, once had a, like some, I don't know whether it was lunch or dinner, but it was in California and we were like at this dock and we were eating lobster or crab or of some sort. And my dad had this wooden like hammer. He would like try to crack the legs of the crabs or lobsters or something. It looks very something similar to that time. Anyway, um, oh, JHL also said, what if I found that I made a mis make a wrong mispronunciation or did I need to make, correct it immediately or just let it pass through? Correct it, correct it. If you know you made a mistake, you might as well correct it right away, of course. Okay, so guys, by looking at the picture, let me know what expressions that you would like to use in your answers and by gathering up all the information, all the things that you recommend or you suggest, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to add them up, sum it up into one complete answer. Okay, so share your expressions and words with me. Anytime you make a mistake, like even for part two, part three, part four, part, part five, you know that suddenly you made a mistake. The thing that you just said was uh, wrong, then you fix it. It's just like erasing something you wrote and you know, like updating that thing with the new information. Yes, that's what you should do. So let me see some expressions that you guys want me to use. Mm. Nothing. I'm going to wait for some words that you guys suggest or you guys want me to use before I share my knowledge and information. Okay, it looks like they're friends. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're having a very nice meal. It doesn't look like just casual meal. They're having a very nice meal, I think. Um, it's Maybe it's a course meal and they're having salad. Just they, Maybe they just started to eat. They have some bread, plates of salad, some drinks. 
But you have to think about like what are some verbs that you guys are going to use to describe their actions, right? That is the most important thing. Saying that there are boats, there's a table, there are some plates, that's not that important. Using verbs, that is the most important thing. You guys got no idea? I thought some of you are taking tests tomorrow. I mean, you should be able to come up with words right away as soon as you see these pictures. No way, no words? Okay, so JH said this picture was taken near a harbor and there are three people and many ships in the picture. That is true, many ships. And normally um, ships refer to big ones and you could ca call them boats, yachts, okay? And a Puyu um, says taken at a dock, and there are three people. There's a man and he has long blonde hair. Okay, and beard is using a fork and knife to take food. Mm, take food, actually eat food or have food. Okay, and David, this is picture taken outside near a river. Okay, and there are three people in this picture. Girl is holding forks. She's holding holding one fork and a knife. And Hui Chan, this is picture taken in a outside restaurant. Okay, so th this is a picture taken outside. Okay. And there are three people. There's a man who's wearing a red shirt and using tools to have some food. Okay, those tools are called a fork and a knife. Okay, Peter, this is a picture taken in an outside part of this restaurant. Okay, you can just say people are sitting outside at a restaurant, right? And I can see three people and on the right, there's a man with red shirt holding a knife and a fork while talking to his friends. Okay, great. Guys, when you are talking about people, make sure you mention where the location is, okay? For instance, the guy on the right side. It's right side of the picture, right? And then you talk about his appearance. That's what most of you are doing. And then you talk about maybe one or two actions that he's doing. He's holding and is talking, right? And then you have to move on to other people because you haven't got much time. You've got only 30 seconds. So on the left side, there's a woman, she's doing the same thing. She's holding the utensils. That's another way of saying those uh, fork and a knife, right? And the guy w uh, on the left side, he's listening. He's listening to his friends, okay? And you know, this, you could say this is a picture taken at a dock, at a harbor, near the water, or at the waterfront. That's what we call it at a waterfront. When you say at a waterfront, you just see something like water there. So it's in front of a water. So at a waterfront. This is a picture taken at a waterfront is an expression that you guys can, you know, get from me. And um, yeah, I guess they are sharing some experience in their cruise journey. I think um, Shin, you went too far. Okay, you, you don't know whether they're talking about their cruise journey or not. We're not creating a story here. We're just describing the picture. Okay, so talk about any like you know objective information that you see in the picture. Don't create any kind of story. You don't have to do that. It's unnecessary. And outside restaurant, outdoor restaurant, a man with long hair. And long beard? No, beard. It's B-E-A-R-D. Eating is talking. He's sitting on the opposite side of his friends. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share with you guys my answer. Here it goes. Well, this is a picture taken at a waterfront. And there are three people in this picture. On the right side of the picture, there is a man. He has a beard. He's holding a fork and a knife and talking to his friends. Uh, on the left side of the picture, I can see another man and he's listening to him. And next to him, I can see a woman. She's holding kitchen utensils and looking at her food. It looks like they're eating food outside. And in the background, I can see some boats. Maybe they're having a good time. Okay. All right. So I quickly went on to, from the first guy to the second guy and the, the woman. And then I tried to have some time remaining so I could talk about the boats in the background. And I gave a wrap up by saying maybe they're having a good time. Okay. I always tell you guys, you know, the last sentence doesn't have to be so grand or great. I just said maybe they are having 
a good time. And for most of the pictures, I use this as the, as the ending, okay? And maybe they are working hard. There are some cases where the pictures are taken in the office, right? And we could say definitely maybe they're working hard. Or you could also say maybe they are busy. And lastly, you could say maybe, you know, in case it's a picture of a street, then, you know, mostly most people are like headed somewhere. They're going somewhere. That's why I'm going to say they are going somewhere. We don't know where they're going, but, you know, they're headed for something. So we're just going to say maybe they are going somewhere. And you can just simply say change these up by saying people are busy or people are going somewhere. Okay, because the answering time for this part is so short, it's just 30 seconds. And when you try to think of something great or grand, you just lose time. The time goes away. So you just, you know, miss the time to say something. So just wrap it up with something that you're familiar with. And you can surely do that by using these four different sentences. These four sentences would cover up 100% of the pictures that you see on Toy Speaking. So again, maybe people are having a good time, maybe people are working hard, maybe people are busy, and lastly, maybe people are going somewhere. Okay? Great. Here we go. So this is the second picture. And yes, we see some people going somewhere, right? So now guys, we've moved on to the second picture. Mm. So try to look for some information that you want to mention about this picture. And a kibuni ga jokudunyo person, the Korean person said, how can we say a floating restaurant? Maybe you're trying to talk about a floating restaurant, right? that's the expression that you want to use okay so maybe they're eating at a floating restaurant floating means like something that's floating on the water right okay so that's how you say it floating restaurant okay it features a lot of people walking in the street it features there are you can just say there are you know one thing that i got i want you guys to remember is you don't have to you know use any complicated expressions and you don't have to use like such a long sentences to get good grades okay i just want you guys to like keep it simple and don't make any mistakes because whenever you make a mistake that's where the scores come off okay if you don't make a mistake they're not going to take away your score but if you make a mistake they're going to and if you want to you know make it complicated make your sentences more complicated you know there are higher chances of making mistakes and that is why i ask you guys to keep it simple just repeat the same expressions over and over again there is there are she is she has those kind of very simple sentences and expressions are going to get you 160, 170, 180, and even level 8, 190, and 200, okay? All right, so David Quo said, this is a picture taken on the street. Okay, great job. This is a picture taken on the street. Okay, you know what? You can also say taken in a street. And you can also say taken at a street. They're basically the same thing, okay? So this is a picture taken on, in, at a street. And uh, um, there are many people. On the left, there are two women wearing... Okay, if there are two women, they're wearing coats, okay? Two women, two coats. So both plural and looking somewhere. That's good. And April, uh, taken outside on the street, on a street. And there are people, many people in the picture. And they look, it looks like the weather is pretty cold because most of them are wearing heavy coats and hats. Again, heavy coats, plural, right? And then you have to say hats, plural, with an S. And this is a picture taken at a street. Now, Puyu, you cannot at, say at the street because we're just, we just started to talk about this picture. And in English, when you mention something for the first time, you have to introduce it for the first time. So that's when we use a, right? Not the. 
If you talk about it for the second time and so on, then you can say the street. But if it's your first time, kukukaka, it's the same for you. It's the, not the, a street. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, a woman is holding a plastic bag. Yes. And wearing a green a puffer jacket. Okay, those things you would say, uh, she's wearing a heavy jacket. Okay, so if you're gonna visit Korea, this is what you have to wear for sure. Definitely a heavy jacket or a puffer jacket. You know, those like puffed up jacket, puffer jackets, okay? Uh, you guys are so fast. Who should I read? Hmm. Um, looking, oh, and that one too. Okay, so people are looking at something. That's right staring at something okay and looking somewhere is different because looking at this is you have to use a preposition if you want to present the noun behind it right but somewhere is not a noun it's an adverb that's why you have to take out the preposition so we don't say looking at somewhere we have to say looking somewhere okay i wanted to make sure about that and you can see a car on the background. Okay, the preposition. Okay, so Carol, you gotta be sure about what prepositions to use. So for on the left side and on the right side, we use on. So it's on the right side of the picture. Okay, I'm gonna copy this. On the left side of the picture. So we use on, preposition on for these two sides. And then we say in the background of the picture, in the foreground of the picture, and in the middle of the picture for these three. So it's on for the top two. Where is it? Here, these two. Okay. And in, we use in for these three. All right, now we see a lot of people, much more people, much more people than the picture before. And we see a lot of things happening and there are a lot of people here. So this is what I'm gonna do. Oh, I see the word pedestrians. That's a good word to use for a picture like this. So here goes my answer. Um, this is a picture taken at a street and there are many pedestrians in this picture. On the left side of the picture, I can see two women and both of them are wearing coats and they're looking at something. On the right side of the picture, I can see lots of people and most of them are walking in the street and some of them are carrying bags, most of them are wearing heavy jackets and one of them, no, no, two of them are carrying some plastic bags in their hands. Maybe the weather is really cold because people are just up heavily. Okay. All right, so I tried to talk about these two women first because they are like closer to the foreside and you know, we have some more things to talk about them specifically. So I talked about their coats and I talked about what they were doing, okay? And then I talked about the group of people on the right side or I could say in the middle, okay? So I said most of them are walking because obviously like most of them are walking, right? And then they're wearing heavy jackets or heavy clothes, meaning that, you know, in Korean, we say thick jackets. In Korean and like expression, we say thick, but no, we don't say thick in English. We say heavy. Most of them are wearing heavy clothes and heavy jackets. And they are carrying bags and also carrying plastic bags. Okay, when I saw for the first time, I thought the woman in the green jacket was only carrying the plastic bag, but actually there's another people in the bag and he's also, I think, carrying plastic bags, right? That's why I said two of them are carrying plastic bags. So, oh, actually this, uh, you know, there are like some people are passing by Uniqlo. I can see the signboard of Uniqlo there. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so when there are lots of people, you do something like this, like what I have just done. There are many people, and I said most of them are blah blah walking, okay? And some of them are blah blah, like carrying bags or wearing heavy jackets, okay? And I even said two of them are blah blah, 
by saying two of them are carrying plastic bags. Okay, so this is how you describe many people in a picture. Okay, you can say jacket. Just say jacket. It's fine. Jacket or coat. Make it simple. Just keep it keep it simple. Jackets, coats, shirt, pants. Okay, you don't have to be so specific about the design of their clothing. Okay, I hope that makes everything clear. When there are lots of people, you go something like this. Okay? All right. Now moving on, I'm gonna move on to part three. Yes, here we go. This is part three. Uh, okay, so here on the top it says, imagine that an English newspaper company is conducting research for an article and you have agreed to participate in the telephone interview about exercising. So if you have been preparing for TOEIC speaking long enough, then I'm pretty sure you have something to say about your exercising routines, right? Okay, so um, in most cases for part three, they're going to start you off by asking how often do you do something something and when do you do something something or where and who do you do something something with and that's going to be like, okay, some basic questions they ask you, especially for the first question, okay? And then after like introducing you sort of with an easy question or maybe two easy questions about the topic, they're gonna go into more specific kind of questions saying like, uh, what kinds of exercises do you like, okay? And um, something like, do you prefer to A or B? Like, do you prefer to work out in the morning or during the nighttime, that kind of thing. Or do you prefer to exercise indoors or outdoors? That kind of thing, all right? And uh, lastly, um, some questions would be like, what are some advantages? Or they're gonna ask you about what are some disadvantages? Or sometimes they're gonna ask you for both, okay? Or they're gonna say, choose one. <laughs> this is like the very um, famous question, right? So those are like patterns of questions they have for part three. So obviously if you're given a topic, then you have to have something go through your head. Oh, I'm gonna say this for this topic. You have to be ready. I mean, you, got, you have to get yourself ready before the test because they're gonna give you three seconds to prepare, but you know, three seconds actually, they're not being generous. They're just giving you some time to like understand the question. Okay, they're giving you some time to digest the question so that you can spit out some words as soon as that answering time starts, okay? So it's not time to prepare for your answers, okay? It's time to sort of like take a breath and then start talking. So three seconds, that's not even a preparation time. All right, so here we go, the first question. Uh, uh, should I have the, to answer the same logic of these three questions? Mm. Well, um, I don't exactly understand what you're talking about, but um, I would say this, like you have to have the same like, you know, stance for all three questions because you say, um, you know, something like, I like to exercise outside for the first question. And then you say for the second question, I never exercise outside. Then they're gonna think that you're not taking like, you know, this test as like same person, like talking. You know, if you're the same person talking, then you would, you know, speak about something at the same situation, right? So from the same point of view, you have to talk in the same point of view. Okay, that's what you have to do. Mm, April. Oh, so everybody, so the first question is, where do you purchase your exercise clothes and why do you prefer to make your purchases there? So where do you buy those clothes and why do you, you know, choose to buy your clothes there? April says, I usually buy exercise clothes online because I, it saves time with an S and there are many different shops with different styles and I can compare the prices. Not only price, it's not one, right? It's many prices, so that's gotta be plural, plural. The same time, okay? And JH, 
Usually, I purchase my exercise clothes online because it's more convenient to me and I don't need to go outside and what I need is to click some buttons. Okay, JHL, I would like to correct that expression to all I have to do is click. Okay, click some buttons. Okay, so this way of, this expression is like, it's supposed to be something like this. There's gotta be two there, but you know, we're, we don't use, sometimes we get rid of two when we're talking. You can say two and you don't have to say two. So all I have to do is to click or all I have to do is click, basically the same thing. Che hai yong, I usually buy my exercise clothes on the internet st online store. It's because I don't have to waste my time to go to the offline store. Okay, um, store, to go to the store, store is considered offline, okay? So you don't have to differentiate that place by saying offline store, but okay. And Koi Tran, I usually purchase exercise clothes at a store near my house because there are many options to choose from and the prices are also affordable. Good. I usually buy exercise clothes from sports shop. It's really convenient for me because the store is located near my house. Okay, so po you, I want to make a correction there. All right, now, near is a preposition and nearby is an adverb. Okay, so how you use these two words. It is located near my house. When it's a preposition, you have to use it with a noun, but it is located nearby when it's an adverb you don't need anything in front of it or behind it okay so nearby my house is a wrong expression make sure to correct yourself okay and uh, close at ABC Mart because the price is reasonable a fitting room I can try on the clothes that's right uh, prefer to buy clothes there I like the image of the brands. That's right. They have uh, the good quality products. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I think basically you guys are saying that either you buy them online because you can save time and compare lots of things and read the reviews, or you prefer to go to the stores because you can try on the clothes. You can try on the clothes and. You know, like Nike or Adidas, they have good image, the brand image, and they also have good quality products at an affordable price. So I think basically that's what you guys are saying. Okay, good. All right, and I'm going to sum up everything and I'm going to share with you my answers at the end, okay? And the next question is this, what kind of exercises would you recommend to your friends and close relatives? Okay. Okay, so what kind of exercises would you recommend to your friends and close relatives? Okay, so Koreans, I think they're getting um, more, uh, they're changing a lot. Like Koreans have changed a lot during the past, I think, 10 years. I think before 10 years, people were not so conscious about like, you know, exercising. Some people were going to the gym, but all they do would be like just running on the treadmill, that's it. But now we see a lot of female, like, you know, friends going to the gym and also lifting weight. So that's a huge change. But still, I see a lot of girls just saying, oh, I do yoga or I go to the park and I jog. I do some simple exercises. I mean, whether being simple or whether being extreme, I think exercising in some kind of a form is very important. I mean, I am an avid like exerciser. I, I do all kinds of exercises. I did heavy weightlifting. I you know participated in like that like bikini whatever like you know the 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 the, the competition. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm into squash these days. I've been into squash for almost like 10 years and I'm still improving. And I, I've done yoga before this, you know, shooting. And I think um, something to recommend for most of you, like friends and close relatives, I guess would be yoga. <laughs> yeah, because you don't need anything. All you need to do is grab a mat and just like, you know, you can do it alone at home. You have all those yoga YouTube videos. So you just like, you know, follow their moves. It's easy, but I told my mom, I talked about yoga with my mom and dad, but it seems like for our older people, it could be hard. I mean, their body is stiff. Their bodies are more stiff than like, you know, younger people. So they have a hard time like following some of the movements. So in that case, in those cases, I guess going out and walking, power walking, 
or uphill walking, that's also recommended. So let's see your recommendations. Okay, JHL says, I recommend jogging because it's very easy and cheap. Actually, you don't need to pay anything to jog, right? All you need to do is go outside and move your legs. That's great. And hi all, it is because it's easy to compare um, prices than the offline store. Okay, that's from the last question. JH, uh, uh, no, 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 Google Gaga, I recommend. Okay, recommend is used with an ing, okay, form. So I recommend taking a walk. I recommend taking a walk. It's easy to start exercise, zing, or to exercise. Everybody can do it. Uh, Koi trend, I would go for jogging. Good, that's a good way of saying, I would go for jogging. This is because it doesn't cost anything and everyone can do it to improve their health. Youngshin, I would recommend running because only one uh, thing we need is one sneaker. Okay, again, Youngshin, you could say, all you need is shoes, okay? All you need to do is run or go outside okay so when you say all you need then is something then you just put a noun there but all you need to do then you have to put a verb there because basically we're getting this rid of this word too right uh, that's all you need and uh, my friend have never exercised okay uh, Mm, it does not need any equipment, good. I want to recommend table tennis to my close friends. Yeah, I wanna try table tennis too, actually. There is a table tennis court, like a big place, right in the basement of my apartment, and there are a lot of people there. They have some clubs, and a lot of people do like joint kind of like, you know, events, and it seemed very interesting. And you know, by the way, they like, you can play table tennis at all different ages. I see old people doing, I see young people doing, and even kids doing table tennis. So I am, I'm actually interested in playing table tennis someday. Jump roping. So uh, David, okay, so recommend, I told you guys, goes with the ing form of a verb. Then you would have to say, I recommend jogging, right? But if it the word is jump rope, then you have to say, I recommend jump roping okay so roping ing goes on roping not jumping rope okay okay all right so you guys know basically what to say for the second question all right and moving on for the third question all right so the third question says which of the following factors concerns you the most when planning your exercise routine okay let me tell you guys a story, okay? So this one time, um, my sister-in-law, Rachel and I, we wanted to learn how to play tennis. I think that was like more than 10 years ago, almost like 12 years ago. And you know, she ha came up with this idea and I bought her the tennis racket and I started doing it with her. And then, you know, like oddly, you know, it's not even odd. Like normally tennis is like, you know, played outside, right? So we had to go outside in order to play tennis. Of course, there are indoor, you know, courts, but there are not many. And, you know, Korea, like I told you from the beginning of the show, the winter is so cold. And the guy that we were taking like tennis lessons from, he always took us outside, you know, to an outside court, even during the winter time. And we were like holding those hot packs while like standing outside in a freezing weather trying to learn how to play you know tennis and we were just beginners so we were not running around so it was like so freaking cold and that's how we you know gave up learning tennis and by the way you know tennis rackets are extremely heavy for like girls to like swing so i personally would consider weather a lot when i choose like any kind of exercise and like try to plan my routine so like one good thing about squash, I told you guys that I'm playing, is you know you can play, I mean like 365 days a year, whether it snows outside, whether it being like winter, because it's an indoor sport, yeah. And as long as the courts are open, we can go and just like play. 
Okay, weight training is also yeah something that you can do 365 years a days a year, right? And Teiji, I know you would recommend kickboxing. I, you know, when I wanted to lose weight, I mean, kickboxing was so effective too. It was really fun, and it, you know, you can get rid of stress by just hitting the bag, right? So I think kickboxing is quite good. Yes, but you know, it's so scary if you play with somebody, then you might get hit. hit. Although you're wearing those like safety gears. Uh, hi, Yong. I concern weather. Okay, it's not I concerns because you change the subject to I, then I concern weather the most. I usually exercise at a park. Okay, that's good. And JH, the weather is the most important factor. Jogging and cycling are outdoors. That's right, if it's rainy, I can. If it's sunny, I could go. All right, so I think weather would be the most important factor. Just as I mentioned before, I prefer to go jogging in my free time. Okay. So yeah, I guess most of you have like the same reason. From my point of view, I think exercising time is very important. I would like to spend less time on exercise. Okay, exercising time, mm, Okay, if you are gonna choose exercising time, it's more about whether you prefer morning or evening or the afternoon or before lunch, after lunch, that kind of time, okay? It's not about how long you exercise. Okay, so um, David, I think you need to um, think about that. Physical. I'll go for, I'll go for a physical condition. That concerns the most. Okay, when you say I'll choose something, like I'll choose the weather. I'll go with the weather. Okay, this is how you could say it in a like speaking kind of manner. I'll go with the weather. I'll consider the weather the most. But you don't even have to say the, I'll choose weather. I'll go with weather. I'll consider weather. Okay. Taiwan, yeah, weather. Sometimes it's rainy, sometimes it's hot. It's very wet outside. Okay, all right. So now I'm going to share with you my answers. First, so where do you purchase your exercise clothes and um, why do you prefer to make your purchases there? Okay, well, I like to purchase my exercise clothes at Nike because Nike has many kinds of clothes and I think they have reasonable pricing. So I like to go, no, no, sorry. I forgot to click on the timer. I'm gonna start that over again, okay. Where do you purchase your clothes, exercise clothes? Where do you purchase your exercise clothes and why do you prefer to make your purchases there? Well, I like to purchase my clothes at Nike because it's a sports brand and they have many kinds of clothes there. And when I go to their store, I can try on their clothes and the prices are quite reasonable. So I like to buy things from Nike. Okay. All right. And the second one. What kind of exercises would you recommend to your friends and close relatives? If I were to recommend one, then I would say walking because it's the easiest exercise that anyone can do. I mean, all you need is a pair of shoes, a pair of sneakers, and you can just go outside, go to the park and start walking. Okay, and the last one is this. So which of the following factors you concern the most when planning your exercise routines? Exercising time, weather, and physical condition. 
I think weather is the most important thing because when the weather is bad, then I wouldn't like to go outside and exercise. If I want to ride a bike or if I want to go jogging, I would have to go outside, and weather is very important, right? And if the weather is good, like in spring or fall time in Korea, it's warm outside, it's breezy, so I like to go outside more and exercise more. So I think weather is the biggest consideration. Okay, so that's how I would say it. All right. Uh, I'm telling you guys, I didn't plan out my answers before the show. I just like say whatever I want to say, like whatever I come up with during like you know the time. But you know. You talk about whatever you want to talk about. The most important thing is you talk until the time ends. Okay, I got an answer. Somebody asked me uh, in, in the comment section saying, "What if the you know answering time is thirty seconds? I speak for twenty seconds. Is it fine?" Well, you know, I said the more the better because if you talk longer, you know, supposedly you're giving more words and expressions and you're being more fluent about like talking more about whatever the question is. So they're gonna give you more points and they're gonna give you a higher score. So basically it's the more the better. So I always tell my students to talk until they get cut off in the end. But you know, that, there's a thing about getting cut off. I mean, if you get cut off about while you're saying something important, that's gonna be an issue. But if you already provided everything that the question is asking for, and then you talk about something additional, and then you get cut off, that's fine, okay? This is a speaking test. Being talkative is essential, all right? Okay, so now we're gonna move on to part four. Okay, so uh, part four says on the top, heritage, food, crafters. And it does say they are offering cooking classes on the top, right? So you can see this is like a cooking school or you can say culinary school. So you go there to learn how to cook. <laughs> okay, uh, these days I'm trying to cook more often at my home because you know, because of inflation, it's really hard to, you know, eat outside. And also, you don't get the right food for the money that you pay outside. I mean, you pay about $10 and you get this shitty food and you, you know, you get pissed off while you're eating. You're like, I'm paying this money and I'm getting this food. So more and more, I, you know, tend to cook at home and I want to eat like good food, good quality food. And that's the reason why I, you know, try to cook more. And um, yeah, if I have an opportunity to take these classes, I would like definitely go there to take these classes. Um, you said, uh, No, 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 no. Um, uh, the recording time, the recording will be only done only during that answering time. You get cut off. You get cut off when the time's up, okay? But I'm telling you, just keep talking, okay? Even if you get cut off, all right? Well, you're gonna stop talking anyway because there's gonna be something popping up in your screen. Um, is it okay to be cut off when I was making conclusion? Yeah, of course. I told you. Basically, if you said all the important things related to the answer of that question, then it's fine whether you get cut off at the end. That little part doesn't really matter. Okay, so risotto. Knife skills, winter soup recipes, sourdough baking for beginners, all about salt. You know, I am learning more and more about salt as I get into cooking. There are so many different kinds of salt, right? Like Himalayan pink salt is really hot these days. And finger food for the parties. And uh, you see the names of the instructors, like Tom Holland, Sheila Lee, Dan pa Peterson, Ryan Holly, Jennifer Cooper, and Lisa Hines, or Haynes. And then the registration deadline, we always get that information on the lower bottom part of the charts. December 29th Friday and the registration fee is $250 per class. And you have to be careful because all these like, you know, cooking classes, they ask you to bring some ingredients or any materials. And most of the times, all ingredients are included right? But on the chart, they don't give you full sentence. So if you are going to give that information in your answer, then you have to somehow rearrange it or, you know, use that information and make it into a full sentence. 
okay? So from the top to the bottom, that's what the information says. And let me give you the first question. All right, well, first of all, the narration started out like this. Hi, my name is Tasha Waynes, and my friend told me a lot of great things about your cooking classes. And I'm interested in signing up for a class in January. So can you share some information about the classes that you'll be offering in January? Okay, so the first question is, what is the registration fee and what does it include? Okay, you know, the first question is always very obvious ones. You know, they ask you about the time, about the date, about the day, what day it's going to be held, and the registration date, and the fee, and this time, what is the registration fee, and what does it include are the questions, okay? Just be careful, there are two questions here, so you got to provide, you know, a sufficient answer for both questions. Okay, so David, you said being cut off. You guys are asking something about being cut off. You cannot, it's not okay to be cut off after saying the first answer, okay? You gotta be able to put in answers for both questions and then sort of add something else and then you get cut off, that's fine, okay? And for this part, part four, they're intending to get specific like information from you as an answer, right? So you gotta provide that information as your answer. So Choi Ha Hyung Nim, the registration fee is $250 per class and it includes all ingredients. Good. So you started off by saying it as your subject. So your verb is great. It includes all subject. Mm -hmm. And uh, the registration fee at April says is $250 for each class. Mm -hmm. And all ingredients are included. That is a very well put answer. Well done, April. And uh, Young Shin, all right. Oh, well, the registration fee is only $250 per class. It's not only it. It's not only have good instructors. Okay, well, that's a little you uh, misuse of um, you know language there. It's they have good instructors. I think uh, is what you're trying to say. Okay, or I, I believe you're saying something like this. It not only includes. Uh, it not only provides you with good instructors but also the huh? okay I'm gonna go down the line here but also all the in all ingredients See, that's why I say to keep it simple. You're getting, you know, things too complicated here. I guess you were trying to use something like not only but also, right? Okay, but you know, don't even dare to do it. Just like say it's simple, like keep it simple, please. All right. And just I just want to make sure you can say for each class. Basically means per class. They are both same. But you cannot say per a uh, class. This is wrong. That's a wrong one, right? Okay. Hmm. Okay. That was done. That's been done. And the second question, guys, I'm going to move on. The second question is, are there any beginner classes available on Fridays? Okay. I think this is a very complicated it's a very tough question because the question itself is very short but the time you're given is only three seconds and it's really hard to find that you know answer within three second time limit are there any beginner classes available on Fridays are there any beginner classes available on Fridays but actually there are no classes on Fridays there are no classes none whatsoever zero and like obviously the beginner class is only held there's only one which is being held on Wednesday so how are you gonna put this into your answer JH sorry we don't have class on Fridays our classes run from Monday to 
Thursday, okay? I'm sorry, the beginner class is held on Wednesday, January 7th. We'll start at 10 a.m. and end at 12 p.m. Okay, I like both of your answers, J.H. And April, why? Why did you raise the answer? That was good. Okay, J.H., I'm gonna fix you one, fix one thing. Mm, we don't have, now when it's a negative sentence, we normally use the noun with the word any. We don't have any classes on Fridays, okay? So this is the grammatically corrected like sentence. We don't have any classes on Fridays, okay? So that means we don't have any beginner classes on Fridays too, okay? Um, Koi, I'm sorry, but there are no classes for beginners on Friday, good. You know, the reason why we say Fridays is because we're generalizing the information. So it's not only for one Friday, but means that, you know, for all the Fridays in January, we do not have any beginner classes, right? That's why I'm putting S behind the word Friday. Um, David, I'm sorry to inform you that there is no class on Friday. And normally when we say no, we don't have any, um, well, we make it a plural, okay? So we don't say there's no class. That is not, it's not that that's wrong, but normally we say there are no classes instead of there is no class. We, I don't know why, but we just put it, make it plural. It's because it's generalization, right? And for generalization, we, you know, tend to make it plural. So there are no classes on Fridays or there aren't, if you're going to make it into a negative sentence, you can say there aren't any classes on Fridays. Okay, Phoebe, this is the same tip for you, okay? There are no classes on Fridays. Again, for generalized information, we you know keep it plural for accountable nouns. Okay, well, there is one class for beginners. I think uh, there is a class for beginners. Okay, I like this answer, this approach. There is one class for beginners, but it's not on Friday. It is on Wednesday. That's good, January 17th. Please keep it in mind. Okay, please keep in mind. I'm gonna fix you on this. Um, please keep what? We need an object here. Keep that in mind, okay? When you say keep in mind, uh, please, okay, please or whatever. You, you don't need to put please there, but keep in mind that um, there's gonna be a sentence. Okay, that's the reason why we say keep in mind. Keep in mind is not the end of that you know sentence or expression or whatever you're going to say. But if you want to just finish it like at that, then you have to say, please keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay. All right, and then the last one. As my schedule only allows for evening classes, could you share the details of the evening sessions? Okay, we get this a lot. As my schedule only allows for evening classes, could you share the details of the evening sessions? And of course, obviously, I mean, I don't even have to look at it. I mean, we know that there's gonna be two, right? We know. Youngjin님. Okay, of course. Oh, why? Why did you raise it? <laughs> Let me share with you some details. You know, one thing about these answers is that as long as you're giving them the information that's being asked, you don't have to actually like. You don't have to make it long. Keep it that in mind. No, it's impossible. It's keep that in mind is 
what you need to because it and that is basically a noun and that is like playing the object role for the verb keep so you cannot use two words there you have to use just like one word keep it in mind you can say that but in general we say keep that in mind okay keep it that in mind that's completely wrong that's wrong So I'm going to put it this way, guys, just say, please remember that. Don't make it too complicated. Okay. Or please don't forget, forget, or you can say, don't forget it. Okay. Or you can say, please remember, please remember that Please don't forget, please don't forget it. Or, or I just told you, please keep that in mind. Okay, anything that you're sure of, just like go with that. Okay, if you're unsure of something, then don't say it. You're gonna get it wrong. Wow, there are two classes that you can join in. The first one, April says, called. The second one, called. Okay, April, if you're gonna say the first one, you have to say the first one is called something something. Okay, you need the be verb there and you give the title or the title that comes here. And the same thing, the second one is called either the name or the title, sorry, title. Okay? Uh, there are two sessions that are held in the evening time. The first class will be held on January 17th. Okay, Yongjin Nim, it's not in January 17th, it's on. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little like mini lecture about the preposition. So on date, on like day, right? From A to B and then at time, okay? What is so funny, Kuku Kaka Nim? <laughs> Okay. All right. So, uh, although classes are led by, remember the very uh, the beginning of the show, I talked, I told you something about like when to use give or given by and when to use lead or led by. You use give and given by uh, with like lectures. Give a lecture, give a speech, or give. A presentation so these are events basically where a one person is talking to you guys they're talking they're talking in one direction but for lead or led by people are participating and you're actively like doing something together so lead a class because in class like participation is crucial right like what you guys are doing and lead a workshop and lead a discussion and the popular and famous lead a Q&A session. Okay, so I see some people saying class given by, but no, classes cannot given by. So don't get confused. Give a lecture, okay, but lead a class. But obviously these are cooking classes, cooking classes. Nobody does cooking lectures because cooking is something where people have to do something together. All right, April Chen, I have a question. Um, if I don't mention instructor's name, then I can finish those sentences in time. But you know what, you are, you have to provide the names of the instructors. That's what they're asking for. I mentioned, finish all the details. Um, well, you have to mention the names. It's not a choice. Yeah, they're asking for all the details, right? That's why for the last question, you're given 30 seconds. That's why you can, you are to talk for 30 seconds. Yeah, it's a chunked expression like collocation. Well, you know, in English, certain words go with certain verbs, right? We don't, for example, we don't say we make a shower. We say this is wrong. We say we take a shower, right? And we don't say we take a dinner. We say we have, uh, take dinner. Well, for eating, we say we have dinner right this is wrong and this is right 
And this is something that I'm talking to you right now about the verb lead and give. Okay? All right, so here are my answers. Okay, the first one. What is the registration fee and what does it include? Okay, so it'll cost $250 per class to take a class here with us and all ingredients are included in the registration fee, so please keep that in mind. And are there any beginner classes available on Fridays? I'm sorry, but no. Actually, we don't have any classes on Fridays, and we have one beginner class on Wednesday, but uh, and it's a sourdough baking class for beginners, so please remember that. And as my schedule only allows for evening classes, could you share the details of the evening sessions? Sure, let me see. Um, well, yeah, there are two. First, on... Um, Yes, Monday, January 15th from 6 to 8 p.m. There will be winter soup recipes class led by Dan Peterson. And then on Tuesday, January 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m., you can learn all about salt with Jennifer Cooper. And both of them are evening classes offered in January. Okay, so that was enough time to give all the information asked about evening classes, right? And, you know, if you are concerned about time, don't try to, you know, start your answer by saying, oh, there are two, like, you know, classes offered for evening, you know, time. You don't have to go, like, you know, say so much for the first, you know, sentence. Just say there are two. That's it. Okay, and in the beginning when I, you know, was approaching to say something for this question, the last one, I said, um, let me see. And I, you know, took some time there because, you know, for the last question, some people have a hard time like locating, spotting where that like, you know, answer part is. So that's how you could like, you know, sort of like drag your answer, trying to figure out where the answer is, like until you spot the answer. And then, you know, you say, oh, there are two and then you start talking, okay? And so those are some tips that you could use during the test. Okay. All right. And, okay, finally, the last question. Claris, uh, Clarissa, okay, Joy um, Zapanta. Are you from uh, Philippines? I don't know. Oh, will there be a note at a pet during the speaking class? Speaking class, of course, you can, you know, take notes as much as you can in my class. But um, uh, during the test, yes, in Korea, I don't know about other parts of the world. I don't know if it's the same. In Japan, I believe they do because I heard from, you know, um, Tadashi and Teiji. And in Korea, they provide you with a sheet of paper. It's a page, like, you know, just a normal sheet of paper uh, and then you can write with the computer like pen that they provide and after taking the test you have to you know give them back you cannot take it with you take them with you okay so I think that's what you're asking so you can take notes during the test and I uh, you know recommend taking notes only for the last part which is this part that we're looking at right now and uh, by the way, the question is, do you think it's a good idea for students to give presentations to their school teachers on special occasions? Why or why not? Now give specific reasons and details to support your opinion. Mm -hmm. So this is a very controversial issue. It, it was a very controversial issue in Korea because it used to be that, you know, they're all like maybe Teacher's Day. There's a, there's a specific day for teachers. It's called the Teacher's Day. And not only for the Teacher's Day, for the New Year holiday or for the like Thanksgiving's holiday, you know, students would sort of like buy a gift, a present, a fancy one, not even like those like cheap ones, fancy ones for their teachers and, you know, give them to the teachers. And, you know, teachers are human beings, right? And when they receive something expensive from a certain student, then they give, you know, they would do them more favors. And, you know, it became a whole like, you know, 
problem to our society. So the government made a law that saying that you know students cannot give or anybody like shouldn't give people presents over twenty five dollars, something that costs twenty five dollars. I think that's what it is, ima nuchonon or something like that. Anyway, so in Korea, we're like you know basically banned to do this kind of thing because it became a huge problem. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Clarissa, yes, you can use your, you know, they're going to give you. In Korea, they give you. You don't have to, you know, take your own. And David, can you share some tips on how to take notes for 45 seconds preparation? Okay, I'm going to share with you my tips on that. Okay, I think it's a good idea for students to give gifts to their school teachers on special occasions. There are several reasons. How young you think so? Get lots of information about study from my teacher. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there is a law called Kim Yong Nam law. Yeah. So basically, we can't give presents to teachers. I mean, if they, I mean, like my my students from time to time, if I have like face to face classes, like at the lab, they would like bring a cup of coffee. But what I do is for the next hour, I would buy them coffee to make it even. You know, like it doesn't like you know be, being a student doesn't mean that you're inferior, right? It doesn't mean that you have to always provide your teacher with something. So if they buy coffee once, I rather like I'd rather buy them coffee again. You know, to put it equal. All right, so uh, all right, so we're at the last part. So before I get into the answer for this question, I'm telling you guys we have the live feedback session as always. And you know when you send an email, your address to that link on the top, you see. Oh, by the way, before you send your email address, please press the like button and subscribe so we can reach more people out there and help people prepare for their TOEIC speaking test or TOEIC. But anyway, yeah, so if you send the, the email address to the link above, then we're going to send you the invitation when it's your turn and you'll get to talk to me live and get my live feedback, okay? So now I'm trying to have as a, a, you know, much more time possible before 10 p.m. That's why I'm speeding right now. So anyway, mm. you think that um, providing gift to students can build a good relation. That's what you guys think. I think the problem is, <laughs> the problem in Korea with, you know, he favored A over B. He favored one student over other students. That's the problem. Like when student A gives him or gives her a good, you know, a good, let's say, a perfume, let's say Chanel perfume. I think that would be something that you know they they used to give to teacher. Then it's something very expensive. You know, like Chanel per perfume is not like real luxury item, but still it's expensive, right? So you know it's like a burden. It's a burden. It could be burden to the student and the parents, right? And then it, if teachers they get it, get that present, then they 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 have the tendency of favoring one student, the student that gave that you know, Chanel perfume over the other student. So I think that's that was basically the problem. All right, so like, you know, a lot of pa parents, if they wanted a special treatment from their homeroom teachers, if, they're, if they wanted their kids to get a special treatment from their homeroom teachers, they tend to like buy more expensive items for like their teachers. Yeah, I, yeah, it's totally fine. You can mention the law. You can say Kim Yong Nan law. There's a specific law in Korea that prohibits this kind of behavior, that bans. Okay, we have a lot of applicants. Hmm. So I think. I remember 
this one time on Teacher's Day, my student, and I'm, I'm I'm like friends with him now, and my student, he you know took an interview of all these like students at the time, my TAs, the teaching assistants, and he edited this video and he played this video in front of the whole class, and I got so embarrassed, so I ran away, and then he cried, and I was like, I'm sorry, but I you know feel so embarrassed being in front of so many people, like receiving that kind of like you know precious gift. <laughs> So he got really pissed off and mad, but you know I apologized, and I'm not a like I'm not really good at receiving presents. Okay, all right. So I always tell you guys to provide specific uh, example. All right. So when you are taking notes, this is what I tell my students to do. S T A. R, okay? So S being the situation. So long time ago, okay? For me, when I was in elementary school, this is like right before I went to America because I went to the States at seven, eight. So the trouble was, the trouble was that, you know, some students would give presents to the teachers and the teachers would p favor them over other students who didn't give them presents. And there was all that, you know, discrimination <laughs> going on, okay? Discrimination, and it was like unfair for some students. And it wasn't essential, right? Like some students, they cannot buy, you know, expensive gifts. So what the government did was they made a law for Koreans. I mean, I know that Koreans, all Koreans know about this law. We, you know, the government made this law, the Changyeonlan Pop, the law. That saying that we cannot give like you know presents any expensive presents or gifts to anybody like a officers like government officials or or teachers and that like that that would be against the law and you can get punished for punish for that so as a result yeah not that we we hardly ever see people doing this kind of thing and it is against the law again so people are not doing it anymore so I think it has um, affected in a good way. Okay, um, on special occasion, you don't give, you know, normally we don't give teachers. Um, when I was young, students would give an apple, an apple, a red apple to their teachers. I think that is not a problem, okay? But on a special occasion, meaning maybe for Christmas or maybe for Teacher's Day in Korea or like on a special day, okay? Giving an apple, I think, is not a problem. <laughs> Even in Korea, I mean, unless like one apple is over $25, it's okay to give an apple to a teacher any time of the year. Okay, so according to those four steps, you do a little bit of like note taking. And when I tell my students, I tell them, don't write full words, just like, you know, just write some words that would remind you of what you want to talk about. And, you uh, a give um, expensive gift and B um, don't give gift and the teacher uh, treated them differently um, and then the government made law and you know people cannot can't they're like banned to so as a result it is it is good influence okay so that's like you know basically my, what my you know like the piece of paper would look like after I take note but actually I don't even take notes but if you are to take notes I'm telling you don't write full sentences you're not gonna have enough time and you know just like draw four boxes like four boxes and then this situation is like this and yeah, just some words that could remind you of what you want to talk about, okay? And this is my answer. Okay. Do you think it's a good idea for students to give presents to their school teachers on special occasions? Why or why not? Hmm. Give specific reasons and details to support your opinion, okay? 
Well, I don't think it's a good idea for students to give presents to their school teachers on special occasions, and there are several reasons to support my opinion. And most of all, I think it's not good for everybody. Uh, when I was young, I went to a Korean elementary school, and at that time, on special occasions like Teachers' Day or like Thanksgiving Day or New Year's holiday. Parents would buy gifts for the school teachers, and the students would give them very expensive pro, pro, no, presents, and that would have effect on how they treat the children. So the government thought it was a problem. So the government passed the law called Kim Young Nan Law, and the law actually bans us from you know giving gifts to teachers or any government official that is very expensive. And overall, I think it had a very good influence on our society. So I think that's the reason why I think so. Okay, it's a little tricky question. It's not easy, but in Korea we have a specific incident. We have a specific law, you know, aiming this, you know, question, this like idea. So I think that's why I was able to talk about that specific story. Okay. Treat the students differently. Favor somebody over somebody. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our live session. Okay, so you know, as always, as we move on to our live session, the the screen's gonna switch. Okay, but I'm just I'm gonna be here. I'm not gonna disappear. I'm here. The screen's gonna switch, but still, I am here. Don't worry, I didn't go anywhere. We're trying to. Yes, switch to the live session like screen. The setting has to be adjusted. So stay there. I'm still here. You can hear my voice, right? And when everything is set, we're gonna send uh, the email to the first participant. Okay, but still, we're switching to our meeting room. Okay. All right. So it's 9:40 right now. So I think I'm gonna be able to have at least like three, four people on the live show. Hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so once you get into this room, you can choose whichever part you want to do. And after you give your answer to the question that you selected, I'm gonna give you my feedback. Okay. Um, like in most cases, uh, the feedback that I give you for that one specific question applies to all the other parts. So, yeah, if you take note of it. And try to improve your English according to my feedback. It's going to help you a lot to improve your TOEIC speaking score. Okay, so things are moving around really rapidly here. Okay, I'm not moving. It's weird. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry, guys. I'm still here. Don't go away. Okay. All right. I'm coming. Don't worry. <laughs> Just that the camera is getting restarted, so <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> okay, you know, all the every single time when we do this live show. Oh, okay, I'm here. I'm here, but the say they say mic is not working. Is it? Is it because I don't have my ear? Hold on. Hello. Yeah, they're right. The mic mic is not working. Hello. Hello, hi. I'm here, guys. You can see me, right? Can you guys tell me if you guys can hear me? They say the microphone's not working. Okay, is it working? Uh, let's see. I have some question here. The specific mean it has to be our own experience. Um, no, it doesn't have to be your own experience. It can be like general like situation that happened, like what I talked about in Korea. It's not something that happened in my class. Well, yeah, something similar did happen in my school when I was young. It was like a normal thing that happened back in the days. Okay, hello teacher. I want to ask, should I focus on special occasion? Okay, mm. I answered to that. Clarissol, is it okay to buckle while answering? Buckle? What do you mean buckle? Like a stutter? 
Is it what you're saying? Yeah, you can stutter. It's just that it's not good to get high score. And I'm going to take Toei's speaking test tomorrow and I watch your video to prepare my test. It really helps a lot, thank you. You're welcome, my pleasure. Yes, we can see you, good. You guys can hear me now. Can't send email, is it the link close? No, 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 it's the link above, yes. You send the email to that link above and you shall get an invitation. The thing is, we're not going to be able to send invitation to everyone if you run out of time because, you know, our show is um, intended to continue only till 10. So let me start off with the first person as quickly as possible so we can have as many people as possible. So first person is Jody. Uh, we're going to send you an invitation to your Gmail address, Jody. All right, so please check your email and if you click on our email, you shall see that link. And if you click on that link, all you did, all you have to do is just click on that link and you shall enter this room. So you don't have to do anything. You have to do nothing. Oh, Jody's here. Hello. Jody. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you, Jody. Yes. Okay, so can you please introduce yourself, Jody, to everybody? Uh, my name's Jody, mm -hmm. and um, I want to study toys because I want to have a good job, and I want to speak English better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so Jody, oh, wh where are you coming from? Um, I'm from Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam, okay. Wow, your English pronunciation is pretty good, okay? Yeah. So let's see, which part do you want to do? I have no ideas. Yeah, you can pick up. Okay, anyone. well, you know what? Let's try the first picture of part two, okay? Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. so as soon as you see the timer go down, you may start your answer, okay? So, yeah. okay, watch the time. This picture was taken outside. There are three people in the picture. They are sitting on the table and it seems that they are sitting on the boat. On the table, I can see many plates of food and drinks and they are talking while enjoying their meals. In the background of the picture, I can see many ships or many boats. I thought that uh, it seemed that they are having good time. Okay, all right. So Jody, what, which level are you aiming for? What's your goal? And uh, C1, uh, up to 100, 160. 160, okay. Jody, I think you would have no problem reaching that goal because when you speak English, you're really being careful about the grammar and I see not that many grammatical mistakes. So I think that's a good thing. And another thing, if you practice more, I'm pretty sure your fluency is going to improve. I mean, fluency is gonna come with your practice, right? So I think everything is on track. What you have to do is when you're practicing, you need to time yourself. Do you always use a timer when you're practicing for TOEIC speaking? Yes, I use that times um, when, I, when I speak, um, when I uh, practice always speaking, uh -huh. uh, but yeah, but the problem is I uh, uh, about the ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I have, as uh, I mean that um, I try to repeat many words. Yes. Yeah, so I I thought this is a problem. Okay. Well, um, you know, Jody, I think if you go over many questions, you know, go over as many questions as possible before the next test, I'm pretty sure that problem is also going to be solved. Okay. And we yeah. do have lots of questions available on our YouTube channel. So you don't even have yeah. to buy anything. You just like go over some of our live shows or our mock tests and you shall be able to go through enough questions. Okay, so yeah. practice, and I'm pretty sure you will get level seven, 160 in no time, okay? Yeah, thank you. Okay, I really liked your intonation and pronunciation. It's really hard yeah. to get. Yeah, thank you so much for okay. having me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for participating, Jody. Bye-bye, see you again. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so that was Jody from Vietnam, and we're going to talk to Lily this time. Lily, we sent you an email to your Gmail account, so please go to your email account and check our invitation. So once you check 
the invite, they sh there shall be the link, right? So you press the link and you will enter this room. So uh, if you come on the show, if you have any questions to ask me, just feel free to ask me anything regarding TOEIC speaking, TOEIC type writing, and about like, you know, improving your English, anything I, I can tell you. I, if I can give you any, you know, tips or advice, I'm willing to like share with you. Okay, so we're waiting for Lily. If Lily is not available, Lydia, you're the third one on the list. But we're gonna wait for Lily a couple more seconds. So Lily, we sent you an invitation to your Gmail address, okay? Gmail account. Oh, and one thing about Jody's English, her English was really clear and it was very loud and clear, so it was easier. It made e it made her English easier to understand. And that's a very important thing because many Korean students, when they're shy, especially when they're talking in front of a lot of people, Lydia, we're sending you the invitation because it seems like Lily is not here. Um, when they're talking in fr English, in English, in front of a lot of people, they feel really shy and they don't talk in loud voice. But, you know, Jody, she spoke really confidently and that does bring you more score higher score more points okay so speak with confidence loudly guys okay especially for the test if you want to get higher score okay we're waiting for Lydia this time Lydia check your Gmail account okay if Lydia doesn't join us within a minute or so we're gonna send our next invitation to Clarissa Clarissa is it Okay. Oh, it seems like we're not getting many participants today. We're sending all these emails, but not many people are coming. Okay, Clarissa, we sent you an invitation to your Gmail account. Okay. Hmm, that's weird. Lydia, Lily, Clarissa, have you guys left? <laughs> okay, well, next person on the list is Hyung. Okay, and Hyung, we're gonna send you the invitation to your neighbor account. Okay, so guys, check your email account. Hmm. And if you prefer not showing your face, then it's fine just to speak on the show, but <clears throat> we would love it. We would appreciate it if you could just like show your face and share your you know, backgrounds with us about where you're coming from, how long you've been studying for TOEIC speaking, and why you're preparing for this test and all that kind of information, okay? Huh, that's really strange. So we have nobody, Lydia, Lily, Clarissa, Hyung. Okay, Clarissa, Clarissa is here, good. Hello? Hi. Hello, Clarissa, so where are you coming from? Hi, I'm actually from the Philippines. You're from the I'm... Philippines, okay. Yeah. All right, so why are you preparing for this test? No, actually because, uh. As nurses, we need this English test for application for our visa mm. in the U.S. Okay, so yeah, you want to work in the U.S. Yes, and the, t the state that I've uh, chosen uh, are requiring IELTS or uh, TOEIC. And it's easier to study TOEIC. That's, that's why. True. That's true. That's true. So are you planning yeah. to study at the work in New York? Is that why? No, actually in Missouri. Missouri, okay. So they're also accepting TOEIC. Yeah, we we know your channel because most of our colleagues right now are mm. uh, saying like they use your YouTube videos to watch the. Great. So, yeah. are you planning to work as a nurse in the states? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> okay. Well, don't worry. I'm pretty sure your English is going to get you that level. Uh, your English is already too good. All right. So, you know, uh, Clarissa, why don't we work on the question, the last one, actually? It's quite tough. Uh, yeah, it's actually tough. It's really tough, but I would like to hear your opinion on this matter. And I think your English is good enough to talk about this question, okay? So just say anything that you can about this question. So do you think it's a good idea for students to give presents to their school teachers on special occasions? Why or why not? And once you see the timer go down, you may speak, okay? 
Okay, we can try that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. I actually believe that uh, we can also give uh, presents to the teacher during sp on special special occasions, because I believe that teachers are also human and they have their feelings too. They would greatly appreciate if the students would remember uh, them on special occasions as mm -hmm. well. And uh, I believe that it's most of the time uh, when they feel love and when they feel that the students will remember them, they reciprocate the feeling by uh, giving uh, more enthusiasm on their classes and mm -hmm. they are more engaging to their students and mm -hmm. and it allows more the students to be more participative also in the class and mm -hmm. engaging and it's a great environment for the class. All right, great. Clarissa, how long have you been studying for TOEIC speaking? Uh, short only, only a few days, uh, oh. weeks. Oh, for a few weeks, okay. So when is the test? Yeah, on February 7th. On February 7th, okay. You know what? I'm pretty sure you're going to ace the test. You're going to get your level, whatever you want. You're aiming for uh, like 160 or higher, right? Yeah, but uh -huh. when my problem is sometimes I, I run out of ideas. Uh huh. So this is a, a, tip of, a piece of advice that I'm going to give you. For this question, you said the right answer, but after like maybe 30 or 40 minutes have yes. passed, you like kept talking about maybe the same thing and you I was able to tell that you ran out of things to say. So in that case, you always talk about your own experience, like I mean, like try to come up with an experience that you know you can make it up. You don't have to be you know telling the true story, right? So say for example, like when I was young and when I was in elementary school, I gave a present to my homeroom teacher on special days, and they loved it. That kind of you know story. Yeah, then so you can fill up the time easily. Okay. Mm. So right now you had a tough time trying to come up with you know this some like you know some examples yeah. there. Ex true because uh, I'm practicing with your questions <laughs> yes. and when I'm assessing myself it's like oh my gosh what yes. will I say again it's yes. like running through my mind so in the just middle of the create your own like example as if it really happened and it was something that worked for you then you're gonna you're not gonna have a hard time filling up that time okay yes Okay. Yes, well, Gwen. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming by. And, you know, please stop by when you get that level because I'm pretty sure you're going to get the score in no time. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you we'll very much. We'll be watching. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. So we're going to go on to the next person. It's um, T. E-E. -E. And T... Your email address is pretty long, but we sent an invitation to you to your email account, account okay? Um, Vilman, hello, I'm a big fan of you, and I was wondering if you could provide writing lessons on your YouTube channel. Hmm, I can. Actually, I'm teaching toy writing, and I, uh, you know, it doesn't really take a long time for me to, like, you know, teach toy writing because it's much easier than toy speaking. I'm also, wait, also th thinking about that. Hmm, I'll try. Oh, yeah, we have somebody here. Who is here? T? Hello, can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes, I can hear you, T. Where are you coming from? I'm from Vietnam. I just bought in uh, your store one time, last uh, a few months. Oh, you were in Seoul last time? Yes. Okay, so when did you come by? I really love your class, class. so I think if I have a chance to go to Korean, I will just uh, I can join on your class on site. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, so um, T, uh, you said you're coming from which country? Vietnam. Vietnam, Vietnam. okay, Vietnam. Oh, you know what, Viet uh, T, I remember you. Yes, you were here last time, I remember you, yes. You're not showing me your face, that's why I couldn't remember, but yeah, I remember you were here last time on the show, right? Yeah. Okay, so T, this time, why don't we try part one? A passage. Okay. Okay, okay that's good. so I'm that's gonna good. show you a passage, the second one, okay? 
So whenever you're ready, please start reading the passage, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome aboard. We're thrilled to have you join us for this incredible adventure to Grand Canyon. I'm Rich Kirby, your tour guide for today. If you have any question or need assistance, feel free to ask me anytime. Let's go, relax, and get ready for breathtaking views and unforgettable memories. Okay, T. You know what? Your English improved. Your reading improved too. But you know what you need to do is you need to work on the linking part of English. Okay. So again, I told you in the beginning of this lecture, in the session. You know, Koreans we make choppy sound, and again, you are also making that choppy sound, which is preventing you from linking the words and linking the sound. Okay. So when you're reading, it sounds more like this. Welcome aboard. We're thrilled to have you join us for this incredible adventure to the Grand Canyon. So you're sort of like making that, um, you know, choppy sound like staccato in music. But what I want you to do is I want you to push out the sound. So welcome aboard. We're thrilled to have you join us for this incredible adventure. And you have to somehow push out that sound and words. Okay. So T. I want you to try this and read the passage again for the second time. <coughs> okay. Okay. Let me let mm -hmm. me try again. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Welcome aboard. We're thrilled to have you join us for incredible adventure to Grand Canyon. I'm Ricky Cover, your tour guide for today. If you have any question or need assistance, feel free to ask me anytime. Let's go, relax, and get ready for breathtaking views and unforgettable memories. Much better. You just earned yourself like maybe twenty points more. Okay, so don't well. chop off each word. Link them, and not breathing can be a way. Okay, so T, if you don't breathe while you're finishing up one sentence, it could help you with your linking. So you can use that as your strategy. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much. Thank okay. You. All right. I thought you ran away. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. I'll see you around. Okay, T. Thank you for coming by. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So that was the last person on our live session, and. <laughs> Guys, thank you for coming by. Always, it's you guys always make the show much more interesting and fun, and it's always great to have you guys. I mean, like for the first time, for the second time, and anybody who returns, I can see the improvement. And you know, just now we saw the improvement that he was making when I told him to link the sounds by pushing out the words. He actually did it, and he earned himself ten or twenty points more. So that's how like English has to be. And I'm just giving you these like short, small tips on the live show. But like I promised to Tadashi and to Teiji, the English lecture will come this year. Don't worry, guys. I'm gonna have it ready this year. I've been having so many people wanting my lecture, but I've been lazy. I'm confessing. I do. I know. But I'm gonna have that ready before 2024 goes by. Anyway, this is like the first, very first live show of 2024. So. Thank you for coming by. We had a lot of people who applied to be on the live session, but we tried to have more newcomers come into the live session. That's why uh, we weren't able to reach every one of you. But anyway, oh, your T's English uh, internet shutdown. <laughs> Okay, so um, next month, yeah, we have the Lunar New Year the coming next month, so it's gonna be a very short month. But we're gonna see you back here on the twenty third of February. Okay, so twenty third of February, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna be here on Friday night, so you also be there or be square. All right, take care of yourself and see you then. Bye bye.